you got a degree, but you can't land a cybersecurity job. I think there's a lot of people who are facing this reality in the market currently that you may have secured a cybersecurity degree, but you are struggling to land a job in this competitive market. And I think the problem is that market is getting really competitive and degree is no longer a guarantee to land a cybersecurity role. And I think a lot of people are facing this reality. So I wanted to create this short video just to talk through possibilities and, and potential maybe open up some ideas what you can do in order to increase your chances of landing a role. I think what we're facing currently in reality is that the market is getting really competitive and it's really getting hard to land a role. Now, having just a degree is no way that it's going to guarantee to land your role. And I think the problem sometimes is that first you have to understand that most degree programs to build takes roughly around, let's say, five years. So by the time you do the degree, the chances are that degree is five years out of date. Secondly, most of the degree programs are crammed with theory and provide very limited access to building real technical skills and grasp that you need, even in junior level types of roles. So what can you do? Well, first and foremost, I think the most important step that you can do is build your own home lab. You can scour the internet, you know, search on Google and find people examples the way they build their labs. But I think you can do that at relatively low cost. Now, it doesn't have to be very convoluted and very complex lab, but I think what you can start with, you can get a pretty decent laptop or a PC and learn how to use virtualization. So you are then going to be able to build a number of virtual machines. So I think to start with, you can probably practice building a couple of virtual machines. So you can build Kali Linux and you can build something like a security onion. So these are two types of Linux versions of operating systems. So Security Onion is, is a defensive side um, distribution, whereas Kali Linux is a hacking one. So then you can be able to practice and attack one virtual machine and the other. You can even practice in building, you know, Windows Server. You can build, you know, Windows Endpoint. Learn how to harden it, how to secure it, and how to attack it using Kali Linux. But I think the most important part in here is you need to be able to showcase those skills and advertise that to the world. Now, how do you achieve that? The easiest way is using things like LinkedIn, Medium, you know, write a blog, make daily posts of what you learned. Because I think the, 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 sh the louder you're going to shout about your skills development, the easier you're going to find securing the role. And, you know, there are number numerous of examples where, you know, I've mentored people before where, you know, they might have been uncomfortable sharing their journey, but you need to get out of that shell and showcase to those around you what you're learning, how you are developing your skills, what you're spending your time on. Not only are you going to uplift those around you and showcase how others can learn, but you're also going to showcase to your potential uh, hiring managers what skills you are developing. Because when you do that, the chances are the role is going to come to you. Because the problem you're currently facing, I think, is that you know there are hundreds of applicants for every single role in cybersecurity. So I even say to myself, you know, especially in, in cybersecurity leadership where I am, there's becoming pointless to applying direct to the roles. So what you do is normally you make friends with recruiters, first of all, because they're going to normally they get the first dibs on the role and, and, you know, they know what's coming in the pipeline so they can help you prepare for the roles, prepare for the interviews and potentially put you in front of um, the hiring managers. Because the problem is you can see, for example, as I say, if you go hundreds of applicants, now recruiter normally 
sends anywhere from three to five, maybe seven maximum profiles to the hiring manager. So all of a sudden, if you made a connection and you built a relationship with the recruiter, now out of all of these hundreds of applicants, your CV is going to go on top of the those, you know, seven candidates, five candidates, whatever that may be. Secondly, you need to be able to, and I think you have to be here very strategic, but make connections in the companies that you want to work with. Showcase how you're developing your skills and ask to be referred. Because that's the only way and the easiest way you can land a role, where you can bypass the whole selection process, the whole ATS HR system that filters your CVs and go straight to the top of the pile. So advertise, showcase how you are developing your skills, you know, build your home lab. If you can't build your home lab, there are alternatives. Platforms such as Hack the Box, Try Hack Me provide various pathways to build those skills, develop those skills and build essentially hands-on experience. Because what you want and what, you know, hiring managers are looking for, people who Take the initiative, take the time to learn and develop those skills. You know, take, for example, you know, security operation centers. Learn how to use Azure Sentinel. Well, that's a that's a security incident and event management platform that, you know, a large number of uh, security operation centers are going to use. There are plenty of material on Microsoft website, but the key goal is you need to get hands-on, find labs where you can use the Sentinel, Defender for Endpoint, Defender for Cloud, and build those skills, understand how you can leverage hardened environments, how you can secure and deploy controls, because those skills are gonna be invaluable. Secondly, you know, yes, you can pass certificates, you can learn AWS, uh, security specialty, Azure security engineering certificate, you know, SC200 certificate, which is Azure um, security analyst. But the key problem is, again, you, while passing just exam, you're going to learn a lot of dry theory and material. Your goal is to find labs where you can actually practice and do practical skills, understand how each control is deployed. And secondly, you need to understand one important thing. You need to be able to learn and practice scripting. Because every single enterprise no longer deploys cloud through graphical interface. They do it by either HashCorp, uh, Terraform, or any other scripting templates, cloud is no longer deployed through graphical interface. So you need to be able to deploy security controls through a scripting language, such as HashiCorp Terraform. So that's a key skill to get into your, you know, arsenal and learn. Get and meet like-minded people who are on a path looking for roles. You know, I always say build a wide network of security professionals, build relationships, because you never know which person gonna open the door for you. So attend security conferences, find the local B-sides, find any other security conferences, make friends with vendors, be curious. Because I always say, you know, if you come across a good hiring manager, the key two skills and what drives my hiring is, attitude and aptitude. Yes, you can learn all the technical um, abilities, but I can't teach you to be passionate about cybersecurity and be willing to continuously learn. So as long as you are able to showcase this to the world, the chances are your success will improve, improve tremendously. So attend conferences, go to Discord, um, you know, find local meetups, connect to people, and showcase, you know, your goal or where you want to be. People not only going to give you advice, but potentially help you and put in front of the hiring managers who are looking for the roles. So you have to, guys, think outside the box. Just firing hundreds of CVs and job applications is not magically going to land your role.
You need to differentiate and showcase how are you different? How are you spending time and energy to develop your skills and improve your ability to land the new role? So there's a few snippets, hopefully, for you guys to just think about what you can do, how you can build and advance of those skills. But home lab is very important, you know, and document, showcase to LinkedIn and to the world how are you building this lab you know that might be invaluable to those you know one step behind you but also you're advertising to the hiring managers how are you taking initiative and in building those skills i think that's going to be your utmost importance way to not only show but demonstrate and actually showcase step by step how you're doing it build a portfolio of your skills blog, you know, any kind of way that you can showcase the world, how are you building those skills? And you have to remember, guys, you're going to hear a lot of no's and you can never give up because you only need that one yes to land that role. Because once you land, it's going to be tremendously easier to then advance your career. But getting in there, that's the hard part. So as I mentioned, degree is no guarantee. You have to build those skills and continuously build them and showcase to the world how are you building them? How are you advancing your career? Remember that, guys, you know, cybersecurity is a competitive market. And I know media has portrayed this, you know, skills gap that we are short of 2 million roles. I think that's all nonsense. And it's, you know, People have been swayed and attracted to the role with potential, you know, chances of working from home. Yes, you can land that role, but chances are we are moving into sort of hybrid environment. And it's really competitive in technology to land a role. So think how you can differentiate yourself. Think how you're going to evolve those skills. Find friends to practice interviews again you know and do not be afraid to be inquisitive and wrong you know one of the main skills that you're going to learn is actually to google everyone in cybersecurity uses google or you know even chat gpt when you don't know something it's fine to not some not know something instead of blab your way around and try to hype you know, the fact that you don't know something, showcase how you're going to find out the answers, showcase that you have skills of actually to find the answer and and talk through the fact how you're going to arrive at the answer. That's way more impressive than just trying to wiggle your way out of the difficult question. So these are a few key important ways to secure your next role and and thirdly probably another way that you can do and what i did in my time when i was breaking into cybersecurity, it's going to be hard but find events and conferences again that are geared towards junior candidates and apply to go and present it doesn't have to be something complex but what you're learning and showcasing and being able to talk about that in front of audience going to build your communication skills, going to build your experience. How can you explain that? Because the key point in cybersecurity is not only to pass certificates, but being able to explain technology and controls to non-technical people. That's a key skill. So practice with your friends, your mom, your sister, someone who's completely non-technical. If you can explain something to them from cybersecurity world, that's an amazing skill to have because that's going to open many doors for you in the future as well. So guys, hopefully that's going to be useful for you. And most importantly, stay safe out there. If you need any help and advice, I'm going to drop in my LinkedIn um, link. So connect with me, ask questions. I'll try and help as much as I can, guys. But hopefully this allows you to increase your chances of landing the next role. So stay safe out there.